Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you in Photoshop how to separate a photograph or any other multicoloured image into CMYK separations ready for screen printing. First I'll begin by putting this on the screen. This is a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that I'll be using throughout the tutorial. I recommend noting them down because it'll make it a lot easier to do processes in Photoshop and especially today it'll make it a lot smoother for you to do. So now that you've hopefully noted those down, first of all I'll show you what our final image should look like, which is this, which I had on the screen originally. As you can see that from a distance it looks kind of grainy, but um, if I zoom out a bit more, you can see that the image comes together a bit more and you can barely see that there's any graininess to it. But if I zoom in further, you'll be able to see that the image is actually made up of four different colours, C, M, Y and K. These are the same colours that you'll find in most standard printers. The C stands for cyan, M stands for magenta, Y stands for yellow, and K stands for key, which also means black. You carry out this process when you want to prepare an image for screen printing because your image needs to be completely black and white to be exposed onto a screen, and you want to be able to split your image into the most limited colour palette possible. Because on the original image of this, which I'll show you in a second, if you were to split it into every single colour tone there was on that image, it, there would be way too many layers for you to handle. So I'll show you how to open your image in Photoshop and then show you how to half tone it from there. So to open your image in Photoshop, you'll want to go to File at the top of the screen here and then click New. And then you'll want to select the size that you want your image to be. I'm going to do A4. If you can't find any of the paper size presets here, if you go to the top where it says print and click on that and then click view all presets, you'll find all the different paper sizes listed here. So I'm going to select A4 and then on the right hand side here are all your options. Because my photo is landscape, I'm going to change the orientation. And it's really important to make sure the resolution of your document is 300 PI or 300 DPI. If it's pixel centimeters, you need to make sure you turn it to pixels per inch. This will make sure that your image is of the highest quality possible, because if it's any lower than 300, when it comes to printing out your negatives for your screen, there'll be a really low pixelated quality. So once you've done those, you just need to click create and you've got your document. The next thing you need to do is find your image in a file explorer. I've got mine on my desktop at the side. So you find your image and then you just drag it across into your document and it should place itself there. I've already resized this image so there's a nice white border around the edge. If yours goes all the way to the edge of the canvas, I recommend making it slightly smaller so your printer doesn't clip off any of the edges of your image. So once you've inserted your image, you want to go to your layers tab on the right hand side just so you know, I'm working in the Essentials version of Photoshop, so that's why my desktop looks like this. So you want to right click on the photo and click Rasterize Layer. This will make the image editable for you. Now to begin with, to explain how half toning works, I'm just going to turn the image into black and white and not separate any of the colours so you can understand how half toning works. So I'm going to go to the top of the screen here where it says Image, click on Mode and then Grayscale and then make sure you flatten the image and you want to discard all the colour information. So as you can see this has turned it into a completely black and white image. So if I wanted to put this on a screen um, it wouldn't work right now because if I zoom in you can see a lot of grey tones and your image needs to be completely black and white to block out the UV light on the exposure unit. So what you want to do is turn all these grey tones into different sized dots which gives the illusion of a gradient. So to do that, you go to Image, Mode and Bitmap. If you can't access the Bitmap function, it probably means that your image isn't already in grayscale because it can only be accessed if your image is in grayscale. So here, you want to make sure that your output resolution is the same as your input resolution and your input should be 300. So if there's a difference here, then you need to make your document again and make sure that the original document is at 300 DPI. And then under method, mine's already selected, but if you go in this drop down menu, it will show you all the different options and you want to select half tone screen and click OK. Then you get this second menu for frequency. This is the amount of dots that will be in your image and it's very dependent on the thread count of your screen. The lower the thread count of your screen, the less detailed your image can be, but the higher the thread count, the more detail it can hold. 
The screens I use are 90 thread count, which is a good middle ground. So to figure out a frequency that would work for that screen, a good formula is to divide your thread count by 4.5. Now for me, that gives me about 20, which is a good baseline to work with, but I know I can get away with about 40 on my screen from trial and error. Just for a black and white image, the angle doesn't really matter, but I usually keep it to 45. And then for shape, you can mess around with this as much as you want, but for proper half tone, you want it to be round. Once you're happy with all these, then you click OK. And you can see it's turned the image into small dots. If I zoom out, it will blend the image into a more gradiated image. Whereas if I zoom in, you can see all the small dots that create the different tones across the image. And that's basically how half toning works because these small dots of black block out the light on an exposure unit so that the emulsion can be washed out and it creates a stencil that's suspended on your screen. So now we're going to apply this to the CMYK layers of the image to create all the layers so you can hand print a photograph. So I'm just going to quickly undo all of that to get me back to my colour image, like so. Now we want to separate this into different CMYK layers. So to do that, you go next to your layers tab and into channels. Now at the moment, you can see that the image is in RGB, so it's only separated into red, green and blue. So to change that, you go to image at the top, mode, and then CMYK, and make sure you flatten the image. Now this has changed it to CMYK channels. You can use the little eye icons to turn off each color layer. And when one is on at a time, they'll appear as black and white images. So we're now going to export each individual color layer in black and white, and then we'll half turn them individually. So a really quick way to do this is to click on the lines at the side here and then click split channels and this will separate all the colors into separate documents. So now you can see at the top of the screen, it's split the image into black, yellow, magenta and cyan. So now we're going to apply what we did with the black and white image and how we half turn that to each individual layer. So we go into image, mode, bitmap. All of these images should already be in grayscale. So again, you want to make sure these are both 300 and you want to make sure this is half tone screen. Again, I'm going to keep it the frequency to 40. So when you do CMYK separation, it's the angle where things change for each layer, which create that circle effect that creates all the different color tones in your image. So for black, that needs to be 45 degrees. Again, you want to keep it to round. You could do trial and error with the different shapes and see what kind of effects you get. But if you want a proper CMYK image, you'll want to keep it to round. And then you click OK and that one's done. So then you just move on to the yellow and you do the same again. And the only change is when you get to the angle. And for yellow, it should be zero degrees. Click OK and then move on to magenta. And for magenta, the angle should be 75 degrees. Now, when you do these individually, you will probably won't be able to tell the angle of the dot makes much difference. But when we put them all together at the end, you'll be able to see how they all um, create that circle pattern I mentioned before. And for cyan, you want that to be 15 degrees. Now, all of your separations should be half toned so they all work for a screen the next thing we want to do is put them all back into the same document so we can see how it'll look when they all layer up because if there's any errors then we need to fix that so to put them all in the same document you don't want to put them on separate layers you want to put them back into the channels that they came from because that's how you get the most accurate look of how your final print will look so to do that you want to go to file again and new and then you want to open the same size document that you had before. So I had A4, change the orientation, make sure it's 300 DPI. And then on color mode underneath, you want to make sure it's CMYK color and then click create. So now you want to make sure you're in the channels tab at the side and select black at the bottom and make sure it's the only one highlighted and the only one with the eye icon. Then you go back to your black file at the top, click on the selection tool on the top left corner and select the whole canvas. And then you want to copy and paste it. So you want to do Command or Control C. And then to paste it, you want to do Command or Control V. 
and that will paste it only in the black channel. You want to make sure you don't do this in layers because you won't get the same effect. So then you do Command D to deselect the image. Then you click on yellow, making sure it's the only one selected again. Go back to your yellow document and do the same with what you did with the black. So Command or Control C and then Command or Control V. And then you repeat this until all these are filled. So I'll do that now. And you'll be able to see at the top in this small little window that the image is starting to build up and you can see some color there. And we'll turn all the channels on in a minute so then you'll be able to see how the colors build up. So now all our layers are in the channels. We can turn them all on at the top here and you can see how they layer together. And if I zoom out, then the colors will merge together and you get all the tones of the image just from those four colors. And you can turn them on and off individually so you can see what only certain colors look like together. But this is also something that you can mess about with once you start printing it physically. So when it comes to printing your individual negatives, the first thing you want to do is while all the colors are together, you want to go to file and print. And in the preview window on the left here, you just want to make sure that it's centered correctly. So first of all, I need to change the layout to landscape. And I'm just double checking that none of the edges are cut off on the image at all. If they are, then you might need to go back to your image and just resize it real quick and then preview it again in the print settings. So if it all looks OK, then just click cancel and you want to send each channel layer to print individually. So do what you did when you pasted them in and make sure only one is selected at a time. So I'm going to start with black, go into file, print, and then send that to print, making sure that your print settings are all correct with the correct paper size. So you want to make sure your paper size is A4 or A3 if you want to enlarge it. And then you just repeat this for all of the individual color layers, making sure they're the only one that's turned on. If you have any color on your image here, then you know that you've got more than one turned on and you just need to turn it off. And that's how you separate your image into different color separations for CMYK screen printing. If there's anything I've missed, please be sure to ask any questions in the comments. I really hope this has been informative and a really simple way for you to do this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.